Almost every country on Earth has been affected by climate change in one way or another. Japan, for instance, has been ravaged by massive floods that have inflicted heavy damage on Tokyo, the capital city, as well as some other parts of the country. Sprawling concrete metropolises around the world are particularly susceptible to flooding due to the lack of soil, vegetation, and rain-absorbing trees that can soak up the excess water after a bout of torrential rainfall. Climate change has led to an increase in the severity of weather occurrences in recent years, concrete being a terrible sponge of rainwater, no surprises there, flooding has become a major pain point for metropolitan cities, including Tokyo, which is located on a flat floodplain of soft alluvial soil in a monsoonal climate with regular typhoons. It's sort of a perfect storm for flooding, if you will. Rising oceans have also made the Tokyo metropolitan region vulnerable to storm surges, while years of pumping groundwater has caused some parts of the city to sink 15 feet over the last few decades. Wide areas of the metropolis are now sitting below sea level, barely protected by aging dikes. The low-lying areas of downtown Tokyo have been ravaged by terrible floods since the 1950s and 60s, when severe typhoons and heavy rainfall destroyed large parts of the city. Residents who grew up in Tokyo during that period remember flooding being a regular part of their day-to-day -day lives. Some even recall seeing large freshwater fish swimming in the flooded streets of Tokyo, ready to be caught by adventurous residents and neighborhood kids for the next meal. These climatic disasters have only gotten worse in recent years, with historic floods that previously only happens once in 200 years, now becoming much, much more common. Experts believe that these developments can be attributed largely to the effects of rising average temperatures and changing patterns of rainfall, both caused by global warming. The heat island effect, whereby heavily urbanized areas experience higher temperatures than outlying regions, might also be partly responsible for the intense localized downpours that regularly submerge Tokyo in more than 100 millimeters of rain in less than an hour. Hour. Official studies conducted by the Japanese government have found that without an effective anti flood system, Japan might spend 148 billion yen, that's $1.4 billion, on disaster cleanup costs every single year. This system was finally commissioned by the government after a series of catastrophic floods that left dozens dead and submerged 30,000 homes in 1991. It took over a decade to complete the one of a kind underground flood prevention project that today protects the city from similar disasters that could potentially claim more lives. The Japanese government spent 17 years and $2.6 billion to construct the so-called underground Parthenon that now protects Tokyo from regular flooding. A gigantic subterranean flood system helps redirect the rainwater away from the city whenever Tokyo experiences a torrential downpour or typhoon that might potentially cause flooding. The project, known as the Kasukabe Flood Tank, comprises a network of massive tunnels, huge pillars, enormous pumps, and gargantuan water tanks that together help divert floodwaters away from the 35 million inhabitants Tokyo. The city and its suburbs are crisscrossed with almost a hundred rivers and canals which tend to overflow after a heavy thunderstorm or typhoon. The Kasukabe anti-flood system redirects this overflowing water into underground silos and tunnels, finally discharging into the Edogawa River. The Kasukabe system is more than five stories deep and large enough to accommodate two entire football fields. Overall, the central tunnel stretches over an area of 6.5 kilometers, comprising numerous large pillars weighing more than 500 tons each. The reservoir is in some parts deep enough to hold the Statue of Liberty. The soaring pillars that support the structure also help break the momentum of the water as it flows through the tunnels on its way out into the Edo River. This is important because the tank can release accumulated flood water into the river at a rate equivalent to a 25-meter swimming pool being discharged every second with the power of a jet engine. Managing the force of that flowing water with the help of 59 pillars in the central tank is essential for the stability of the structure. The construction of the Kasukabe flood tank has led to a 90% decrease in the number of homes and businesses affected by water damage between the months of June and October, the season of rains and typhoons in Japan. When not in use, the anti-flood system is open to tourists and visitors chiefly for the purpose of spreading awareness about the importance of disaster management. The Japanese government collaborated with the Japan Institute of Wastewater Engineering Technology to construct the Kasukabe system. Officially titled the Metropolitan Area Outer Underground Discharge Channel, a mouthful, the massive installation comprises a 580-foot-long cathedral-like underground surge tank, 213 flow-regulating silos, 
and several kilometers of interconnected tunnels that can pump around 200 tons of water every second. The operation room managing this entire underground drainage infrastructure is used to safely control the flow of water through each inflow facility. Like a human body, the operation room is the brain of the entire system, while the pumps are the heart, sending blood to the various parts and organs. The operation room, staffed by engineers, analysts, and mechanics, consolidates and directs the functioning of the different parts to ensure safety and optimal efficiency. Construction of this began in 1992, and it was finally completed in 2006. And since then, the Kasakabe anti-flood system has protected the Tokyo metropolitan area from huge financial setbacks every year during the rainy season. The excess water from minor rivers in and around the city is collected via five concrete containment silos connected to a long central tunnel. Each of the containment silos is 30 meters wide and 70 meters high, making the reservoir large enough to handle the flooding from even the most devastating calamities. Designed to absorb the water volume of such incredible floods, these silos angle the incoming water to flow down the circular walls in a vortex to reduce the impact of the crashing water after a heavy bout of rain. An underground tunnel situated underneath the major Tokyo thoroughfare known as Highway 16 then carries the collected water to a surge tank in Kasukabe. Once the weather has reverted to normal, the stored water is pumped into the Edo River from where it can safely be released into the Tokyo Bay without the risk of further floods. The huge pumps used to push the water through the tunnels were reportedly modeled on rocket pumps. Powerful turbines are used to operate the massive anti-flood system along with its many independent parts. While it has benefited the country as a whole, the system has been most beneficial to those living and working in the Nakagawa Basin, a low-lying area below the level of the Edo River. Since it was inaugurated, this impressive feat of engineering has been studied extensively by engineers around the world. The underground surge tank that resembles a cathedral or temple is also a popular item on the itinerary of many visitors to the city of Tokyo. The guided tours of the reservoir gained great popularity after the surge tank was featured extensively in various types of media, including video games, films, and advertisements. For instance, a 2006 television commercial for the British brand Land Rover used the Kasukabe system as a primary filming location because the space seems to resemble a temple. Some TV shows and movies have also used it as a setting to film mystic scenes. However, foreign visitors need to hire the services of a local translator as the guided tour is only offered in Japanese. After more than a decade in operation, the artificial river under Tokyo is proving to be extremely effective. Since the facility was built, the amount of flooding and the resulting damage has almost halved even under the same weather conditions as before. The soil excavated when the tunnels and silos were being dug has been used to construct larger levees or flood banks along the rivers. Over the last few years, the levees that regulate the water levels and keep the river from flooding have been strengthened and broadened for better protection. The new flood banks have been especially designed to ensure that they won't collapse even under massive strains such as during an earth earthquake or when they're submerged underwater during a great flood. This has further strengthened Tokyo's protection against flood water since natural disasters such as earthquakes are, unfortunately, a common occurrence in the region. According to a study on natural disaster risks conducted in 2014 by the Swiss reinsurance firm, Tokyo, along with its neighboring port city of Yokohama, formed the riskiest metropolitan areas on Earth, threatened constantly by extreme rainfall, typhoons, earthquakes, and tsunamis. According to Nobuyuki Toshia, former head of civil engineering for the flood-prone Edogawa Ward in Tokyo, who currently works as an independent anti-flooding expert and consultant, says, Tokyo faces dangers on all sides. Even with the impressive anti-flood system underneath, he does not believe that the city is doing enough to ward off the potential danger posed by flooding. Devastating storms and heavy typhoons wreaked havoc across Greater Tokyo in late 2015, causing a record 670 million cubic feet of water to drain into the underground facility. The four large pumps took almost five days to release the water into Tokyo Bay and clear the deluge. Despite the unimaginable scale of engineering that has taken place below ground, there is relatively little awareness among the residents of Tokyo about the subterranean structure that is protecting them from another calamity like the one that ravaged the city in 1991. Still. If properly replicated and implemented in the other urbanized, flood-prone regions of the world, the system could be much use to the global economy, saving assets and lives that would make it well worth the investment. The onset of more frequent and intense rainstorms in Tokyo, as in recent years, has forced many officials to consider whether or not the region's anti-flood precautions are strong enough. Over the last three decades, there has been a 30% increase in the incidence of rainfall, measuring more than two inches an hour, according to estimates released by the Japan Meteorological 
Travel Agency. The government may soon need to build larger and more durable anti-flood systems in other parts of the country, but a major challenge lies in Japan's deteriorating public finances. Work on the Kasukabe facility began in the early 90s when the country was investing heavily in large public works projects, but with the spiraling costs of supporting an aging population and accumulative government debt more than twice the size of the national economy, the current Japanese administration may struggle to fund such ambitious, if necessary, flood control projects. Still, it is undeniable that the Kasukabe facility has greatly benefited the Tokyo metropolitan region since it became operational. Adaption to major climate risk can never be one-dimensional, however. An investment in infrastructure must be paired with public risk awareness programs, zoning and land use initiatives, and the development of disaster survival skills among local residents and business owners. Together, the effects of global warming can be combated, but it's never easy. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe. If you've got a suggestion for a future side projects video as well, please do leave it in the comments. And thank you for watching.